Hello and welcome to the show. Discussing her new book with people, Sarah Hurwitz indulged some burning questions about her old job working for the Obamas. No one was too surprised when White House speechwriter Sarah Hurwitz decided to write a book at the end of the Obama administration. After all, a half dozen of her co-workers already had book deals for insider accounts of their tenures in the West Wing. But it was Hurwitz's topic, Judaism, that stumped fellow White House alums, she recalls with a chuckle. They were like, wow, okay, not what I thought you'd be doing, she tells people. The unlikely finished product is here all along, finding meaning, spirituality and a deeper connection to life in Judaism after finally choosing to look there, which was published this month. Its origin story traces back to 2014 when Hurwitz, then the chief White House speechwriter to First Lady Michelle Obama and a veteran of President Barack Obama's wordsmithing team, was reeling from a painful breakup. I would get home at night and I had all this time on my hands, Hurwitz, 42, says of being suddenly single. When I got an email about this intro to Judaism class at the Jewish Community Center, I was like, okay, this will fill some time, get me out of the apartment, maybe meet some people, learn about my heritage. Having abandoned Jewish education after her bar mitzvah in the seventh grade, Hurwitz found herself utterly flawed by the deep moral wisdom and the whole sensibility of Judaism that she learned in that class. From there she says, I spent the last two years of the Obama White House in my spare time reading books, taking more classes, going on silent Jewish meditation retreats, which are a thing. And the more I learned, the more I just got like, I really want to share what I'm learning with people. The book covers the religious basics, the Torah, Shabbat, holidays and prayers. Beyond that, who it says, I'm trying to show people the wisdom Judaism has for our daily lives. Discussing the book with people, she also indulged some burning questions about her old job working for the Obamas. Before the question can even be asked, who it says, I did not write that line, she came up with it. My contribution was typing it. She's referring to the former First Lady's now iconic catchphrase from her speech at the 2016 Democratic National Convention. In the years since Mrs. Obama's when they go low moment has for many years and the years since Mrs. Obama's when they go low moment has for many supporters become a reminder or a rally depending on one's perspective about civility in politics. I feel very guilty when people give me credit for it for her line her it says you know she lives by that at this time which is just such a difficult time to see someone whose life is an embodiment of when they go low we go high it is so uplifting it is such a joy and i think people are so drawn to that so then what was it like to write some of the other lines mrs obama has been known to speak the job of being her speech writer is really to ask her what do you want to say and then to type as quickly as possible what she says, admits Hurwitz, whom Mrs. Obama called a brilliant writer with a big heart and a kind soul, in a tweet celebrating the September 3rd release of Here All Along. That's why I didn't even think about writing about my experience in the White House, Hurwitz continues. The truth of a speechwriter's life is that it's spent alone in front of a screen, doesn't make for the most glamorous or exciting memoir. That time Melania Trump ripped off a Hurwitz Obama speech. When First Lady Melania Trump addressed the Republican National Convention in July 2016 with phrases almost identical to the words Hurwitz helped write for Mrs. Obama's 2008 speech to the Democratic National Convention, Hurwitz says her first reaction was, oh, God. Making that kind of mistake is every speechwriter's worst nightmare, she says. Trump speechwriter Meredith McIver soon explained that Mrs. Trump, in a phone call, read passages from Mrs. Obama's speech as examples of inspiration for her own address. I wrote them down and later included some of the phrasing in the draft that ultimately became the final speech. I did not check Mrs. Obama's speeches, McIver said at the time. I just felt this moment of gratitude that we had the most amazing fact checkers who scrubbed every line of every speech, Hurwitz says now. It was so important to the Obamas to always be accurate and always tell the truth to the American people. It was this incredible concern for accuracy and honesty and truth that we lived by every day. What Jewish law might say about at real Donald Trump. You can take the girl out of politics, says Hurwitz, but you know, 
admitting that she still keeps up with political news and President Donald Trump's mo almost unavoidable penchant for bullying and name calling on Twitter, Hurwitz notes that Judaism sets a high bar for human decency. There's all this Jewish law, for example, around speech and how we use our speech, she explains. Do we speak kindly or unkindly to others? Do we gossip? Do we make feel people feel ashamed? I do still follow White House politics, not as much as I used to, but I keep a loose tab on things. It makes me appreciate that I have a tradition that is a protest against all of that, Hurwitz says. Judaism has such an abhorrence of those who abuse the weak, of those who prey on the vulnerable. It is such an abhorrence of cruelty. And so when I see cruelty, when I see powerful people abusing those who are vulnerable, I know that my tradition calls me to object to that. And so a book that is very much not about the White House, maybe a little bit about the White House after all, says who it's, I think writing this book was part of my protest. Thank you.